<laughs> no, it's really buggered up. Very little confidence that this is gonna work. <gasps> still okay, it's still okay. I'm no expert at this, and if you're no expert, it might be worth watching to avoid some of my mistakes. This is my wife's fifth generation iPad, and it's been cracked for a while, but lately the touch screen has become too flaky. So I bought a new touch sensor for $40, and I've never done this before, so this is an amateur way of replacing that screen. The kit came with a few tools, and the video I've seen people do it, they always have a heat gun with a small nozzle. I don't have one of those, so I'll try to use plywood to cover up the middle part of the screen while I try to heat up the edge. I'll start with the crackly bit, that way I don't have to lift the whole screen. I'll use this tool thingy. Oh, this is working better than I thought it would. I'm quite surprised the screen still worked with all the cracks in it. Or, specifically the touch sensor, the screen is behind that. It seems that lifting whole segments is actually much easier than these crackly bits, so maybe I should just work my way around the edge. Uh oh! I think that was thermal stress. Oh dear, look at that screen! Now it's really buggered up. Huh. Okay, maybe I'll work this way. And I'll use the lower setting on the heat gun now. I'm just gonna stick some paper under here to keep that from sticking back together. It also protects the screen a bit, I think. Actually, maybe if I just slide that over the whole screen, because the screen itself is a part that I don't want to wreck. Okay, that's good. There's some progress. So the low setting of the heat gun was not adequate. And I guess with enough heat applied in one spot I can get this out. Oh yeah, there's the wire connections to that screen right there, which fortunately, since I'm replacing the screen, I don't have to worry about saving those. Not the uh, screen, but the digitizer, the, the touch screen part. Yeah, with enough heat this lifts out pretty good. The key is uh, heat much more so than force. It doesn't take that much force once it's hot enough. Now, most of the tutorials I've watched, uh, they managed to get the screen out in one piece. I mean the digitizer. But why would you do that if it's in one piece? So I'm smelling something slightly burnt, but that's actually the wood here. Because this heat gun is quite hot. Not like a blow dryer. Yeah, and this plastic thing is too... Uh, can't take the heat. I got myself a second tool, a utility knife blade. So let's try heating that up again and see if I can get that lifted up enough that I can get something under it. I don't know if this is going to be successful. Okay, I got a bit further. Got to reach critical temperature. Okay, now I think I've got the whole screen loose, which means I can unplug it. Connectors on this side, which is why I had to kind of get around it. All oh, right, I got to get the LCD out first, and I still have garbage on top of that. Change my shield a bit. So that's hot enough that my paper is starting to turn brown. And yet this glass is not letting go. Ah. I just modified my heat shield to only heat up this part here because I just don't want to cook the inside of it too much. I need to get some goo off, some crap off of here too. I think I'll do that first before I try to take the screen out. Well, I think I have the glass off all the way around now. I'm going to clean it up now first. Oh, all the sticky crap. Next step is to actually take out the LCD screen because the connectors for the touchscreen part are actually under it. Well, not every precision screwdriver will work on these things because a lot of precision screwdrivers 
are not very precise at all. They just look nice. Uh, mine aren't very good either, but this one is just barely pointing enough on the end to go into those screws. Now I need to lift up that screen, and I think it's connected on the top because I think the battery's on the other side. Oh, and I see some discoloration on the LCD here. I hope I didn't fry that. I think I can still test this the way it is. Ah, there it is. Oh, okay, good, good, good. And the screen lights up in the whole area, so I haven't destroyed the screen yet. Uh, okay, uh, I'll just uh, hit the power button again. Slide the power off. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Well, that doesn't work anymore. Oh, dear. <laughs> I guess I have to uh, proceed with it turned on. I don't like this. <laughs> oh, that was a dumb move. I think it just timed out on me as opposed to anything else. Okay, and now I need to take this cover off. And this precision screwdriver isn't pointy enough. So this is a very nice looking set of precision screwdrivers, but even the smallest Phillips ones are still not pointy enough to engage these screws right here. But I've got a flat screwdriver and I've actually kind of made that a little bit more pointy and that goes in those screws. I'm not sure where this is still sticking down. I don't know where it could still be attached. So I just watched a video of somebody who knows what they're doing and it says to pry this up and the LCD connector is on the back of it. So that's probably the force that I need to overcome. There. So there's that connector. Now I need to pry the remaining connectors off of here that go to the digitizer screen that I'm replacing. A plug-in thingy, and so is this one I'm sure. Now I need to get rid of the rest of that adhesive tape that held the old digitizer. Well, at least it peels a little bit. I'm using a little carving chisel to do this. A uh, flat-ended X-Acto knife would probably be even better. It's very hot on the fingers. This tape is not coming off in one piece like the other parts. Gotta be careful around the camera module. Now, some of the videos I've watched talk about how to extract this home button without breaking it. Fortunately, my new screen comes with a new home button, so I don't have to worry about that. So this needs to go in some slot in here with a tab on the back flipped up. But I can't really see very well where that slot is. No, that didn't do anything. I stopped filming for a bit to get that in there because my fat fingers are going to be in the way anyways. So I got this quite a bit further in now, and now I think I can push this tab down to lock it in place. Yeah, and the cable moved a bit while I did that, so I hope that's good now. This corner got dented inwards and forwards a bit from a uh, uh, time that this was dropped many years ago. It hasn't been bent all the way out yet, so I'm going to use a screwdriver tip. You don't see that in a lot of iPad tutorial videos. Hitting it with a hammer. Okay, now the other connectors. I think these are going to be easier. Keep in mind that this uh, iPad is probably still turned on. I have very little confidence that this is going to work. So I'm not putting any screws in there right now. I think that would just jinx everything. Okay, we'll push the power button. <gasps> it's still okay. It's still okay. <gasps> it's good. It's good. Awesome. Now I can actually turn it off. Buy the power off. Okay, touch screen works. Cool. So I want to leave the screen plugged in, but I need to prop it up vertically. I have to say this job is quite a bit more tricky because I'm trying to make it so that you, the viewer, can see what's going on. Which means I'm not necessarily approaching this from the uh, most ergonomic angle. Yeah. 
Trying to get these fiddly screws back in there. Ah, got it stuck to the end of the screwdriver. And I just noticed a piece of glass in here. That would have caused the iPad to rattle later on. I'm going to try to bend this corner a little bit more still. The screen cracked when that got bent. Possibly I need to crack the screen again to make it fit into that bent corner. With my hammering, I may have flattened the ridge on here, which actually makes the problem worse. I don't really care so much what it looks like, as long as the screen fits in. Still fits. Well, it seems to work. They put a nice protector foil on the front. I wish they'd put it on the back because the front I can always clean up, but the back, if I don't get everything right now, that'll be permanently dirty. I'll start taking the, uh, the tape off to expose the uh, new gooey gunk. Uh-oh. That tape goes underneath. Oh, you know what? There is a screen protector on this side. Unfortunately, it's underneath some of this other stuff. Excellent! Well, that takes care of that fingerprint I couldn't get rid of. Glad I noticed that now. And this tape goes under the connectors. So I guess it was meant to be taken off first. Okay. I'm sorry for getting the uh, framing off so many times. This is taking all of my focus. It's hard to film at the same time. So now, if I need to open this up again, I'm basically going to need a new screen. Or a new front thing. But this part, this part only cost $40 Canadian with tax and shipping from Amazon. Unable to activate Touch ID on this iPad. Uh, I guess I've read about this that basically they discourage replacement of parts and it knows this is not the original part that it came with. Doesn't really matter though because this thing doesn't have Touch ID, so whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, it seems to work. Let's type a note. It's typing that I had the most difficulty with. Camera still works. Front facing and back facing. I think this is all right. So final step. Tearing off the screen protector. And there's a little bit of the specs here and here, but that's okay. There's also a bright spot in this corner. I think I damaged the display with too much heat. And there's a little tiny bit of plastic stuck in here. I don't know what that's from. But overall, way better than it was. This heat gun is a little bit too coarse, so afterwards I bought this little mini heat gun thing, but uh, testing it, I don't think this is hot enough to really undo the glue on this, but uh, these ones, when they're new, typically also have a nozzle that goes much finer, or you can just get a fancier one of these. This is like the cheapest one off of Amazon. And this repair was a stressful two-hour job, but uh, would I do it again? Most definitely, because I think the second time around, I could do it much faster and much better.